The immigration crackdown continues on the part of this administration. In its ongoing attempt to stop the flow of migrants from entering the country, it's employing a new tactic, indefinite detentions. And they could last for months or even years. Attorney General William Barr, he just issued an order directing judges to detain asylum seekers and hold them. The White House is also trying to restrict visas from countries that have a lot of their citizens overseeing said visa. That would limit the flow of immigrants from those areas. And by the way, most of those countries are in Africa. If this sounds familiar, it should. Those are the infamous S-hole countries that the president referred to last year when he said he'd prefer people from countries like Norway. Joining us now, immigration attorney David Leopold. And, and David, let's start there on, on the visa um, overstay issue. I, I get it. People shouldn't overstay their visas. But it, it seems like there's a little bit of minority report going on here, which is because somebody comes from a country, you're going to cast an entire um, blanket statement that says you can't come anymore because some people from your country overstayed their visa. Is that legal? Well, look, th this administration is famous for uh, for its lawlessness. So whether or not it's legal is something that ultimately has to be decided by the courts. Look, if you look at the percentages, this order is based or this proposed order is based on the percentages of overstays from a particular country. Now, if you take some country like Benin in Africa, where the percentage of people that comes here is much smaller, and the overstay uh, of 10% or higher overstay is going to be much less than a country like Norway, right? Which apparently, because it's a white country, the president prefers. So this is clearly an attack on, on people of color. Is this kind of a, a policy in search of a strategy or vice versa here, that there's a strategy that we don't want people from south of the border or from that continent that the president so colorfully referred to? We want people from Western Europe, and we're going to try and find a law that will allow us to, to kind of shape who comes into the country. Yeah, that's a good question. Look, this is an ideology in search of a policy. It's a white supremacist ideology, and we know that because the president's top immigration czar, in fact, his boss on immigration, is a guy named Stephen Miller, who has very close ties to white nationalists, white supremacists, alt-right, um, the people that have been put in key positions in the Department of Homeland Security, whether it's the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services or Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Some of those appointees have, have uh, ties to some of the no most nefarious anti-immigrant hate groups. Um, so this is really an anti-immigrant ideology, an extremist ideology in search of a policy. And the policy reflects itself through, through mass deportation of Latinos, through the treatment of children at the border by putting them in cages and separating them from their parents, by the Muslim ban which came into effect 15 days after Trump took the oath of office. It's clear what this administration wants to do, and that's make America white again. David, let me pivot now um, to the asylum uh, issue. And I spent the better part of a week along the San Diego-Tijuana uh, borderline. And I think even a cursory introduction to it firsthand shows just how complicated, how much of a mess it is. But in many ways, what the administration is trying to do, I don't see how there's any attempt to resolve the problem. If you're trying to get rid of immigration judges, but you're also trying to extend detentions, um, you're consciously trying to create no pathway for some people to come in. And again, I say this, this is not bleeding heart. If you spend any time there and you see these families and what they're running from, not that everybody should be able to come into this country and stay, but the idea that you just keep them there and you don't let them across the border and somehow this solves itself, it just defies reality. But there's, no, there's no question. Look, when Donald Trump came into office back in 2017, what he did, the first thing he did was stop some of the Obama-era policies in Central America to get to the root causes of this migration. For example, the Central American Miners Program, uh, some of the United Nations efforts in which the United States was participating uh, which had as options um, uh, regional uh, safe havens, things like that, uh, economic assistance. And, of course, more recently, Trump has been talking about cutting off assistance altogether to Central American, to the uh, Central Triangle countries. Uh, so what does that do? That exacerbates the migration, like you just pointed out. 
And then you have this mass migration to the border of people who, like you just pointed out, are so desperate. Uh, then what you do is you cut off the ports of entry. We call that metering, where they're not permitting people who are trying to enter legally and apply for asylum. They're not permitting them to do so. So they go and they, they, they cross uh, other than at ports of entry. And now you've got the specter of not allowing those people to go before an immigration judge, those who have shown a credible fear of persecution already, not allowed to have bonds. So what does that do? That creates mass detention. And why do you think that, that William Barr, the attorney general's order, was put on hold for 90 days? So they can build those internment camps. This is a spectacle of hate that's going on. And this crisis at the border is not a law enforcement issue. This crisis at the border is a, is a humanitarian issue that has been exacerbated and multiplied by the policies of this administration. David, I just have a practical question, which is, I met several people who were midway through the process. They went through various steps. They had to wait there sometimes, better part of a month before they can even have a hearing to plead their case. After that, well over half were not deemed to have credible asylum claims, but those that did were then awaiting their trial date. If the attorney general comes in midway through a process, is he in effect tossing out what have already been credible claims that are now waiting their date to make their formal appeal? I'm not thinking, talking theoretically, I'm talking practically. What happens to those people that have a date, but now the AG says, never mind? Well, he hasn't cut off uh, their right to apply for asylum because as much as they might want to, the Trump administration can't change the law itself without Congress. They can make the process as miserable as possible, which is why they've cut off the ability to get a bond and puts the pressure on them to give up and say, you know what, I don't want to do this. I I'm just going to leave. And I should note here, um, on top of everything that David said, every single person on the border, even of different political ideologies, all agree that in the last two years, the actions on the part of this administration, intentional, dysfunctional, whatever you want to ascribe as to motive, have significantly worsened the situation, driven the demand of people coming over here for those fears, and we have now a situation, if not of the president's own making, but certainly one that's been exasperated. David Leopold, I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, when we come back, everyone, several states, they're enacting harsh restrictions on women who would like the right to choose. I know you say, wait a minute, we have Roe v. Wade decided law well. If you go to different states, you'll find different sets of rules and allowances. The head of the National Organization for Women, she'll join us after the break to tell us just how bad it's getting, but also how they are fighting back. Stay with us.